Hey guys, Anthony Fontana here, and in this video, we go over an IRS proposed amount due notice or CP2000 notice that a client of mine got for not reporting the sale of a house on his tax return. If this is something that, that has happened to you, there's a lot to learn in this video, so stay tuned. All right, before we get into the details, if this is something that has happened to you and this might seem way too overwhelming and too big of a task and you want a professional like me to handle this, please use the link in the description below to schedule an appointment to go over your case. All right, so let's take a look at the original notice that the client got here, CP2000, October of 21. Okay, look at that, scary, man. $200,000 tax bill, that has got to be scary to open up that envelope, right? Um, anyways, there it is, okay, and we'll see down here, page three, explanation of changes, right? Real estate sales. Iris got that 1099. There it is. They sold that house for $473,000, and they figured the tax on the 473. Well, that's not how tax works, okay? It's not actually on the sales price. It's on the gain, so it's the difference between the purchase price and the sales price. So the difference between those two prices is, is essentially what we should be taxed on. But there's a caveat here. This is their main home and the IRS gives an exclusion for the main home of up to $250,000 of the gain excluded from income if you live in the house for at least two out of the prior five years before you sell the house. This pertained to this client, okay? So that's kind of why we were able to do this, okay? Uh, let's take a look at some more stuff. All right, this is what, um, let's see here, the response form. This is what we use to respond to the CP2000. All right, we use the actual response form that came with the notice. You'll see down here, we did you know check the box that we do not agree. And I actually did fax the response here. So I generally like faxing these things. Um, you can either fax it or you would mail it to the address that's on the front of this, okay? Um, but anyways, there I am um, as an authority to file or to, I guess, speak on his behalf on this thing. Uh, and then here is, shoot, where a lot of value comes in, okay? Um, this is generally the template that I use to respond to the CP2000 notices, okay, the IRS proposed amount due notice. Um, but you'll see up here, this is kind of all like a lot of value right here. You definitely want to make sure you include all that. You'll see this AUR control number. Um, that's directly from the notice. You'll see that, shoot, right there. There it is. So I include that just so it all ties um, together. Social, the you know tax year that's happening. What's the subject? There it is. Um, and then I say right away, I don't agree with it. Um, and then the reason why we don't agree, like I said previously, right? Yes, okay, you know, number one, we say, we throw our hands up in the air. Yeah, we forgot to put this on the return, but we also forgot to include the exclusion that we get for the primary home, okay? So that's also what we forgot. Um, and since we qualify, that's exactly what this is saying, okay? He files a single. So if he files jointly, you get up to 500,000 that is excluded from income. But in his case, he's filing a single here. Um, but he did, what was it, three years, right? Live there, okay? And then a list of all the things that I'm sending with this to support the fact that we should have no tax on here, okay? The A and B here, this is the closing statements that we got from both the purchase of the property and then at the sale of the property. So these are gonna tell like how much we bought it for, what date we bought it, and then and then any fees that we paid. Okay. And then and then the same thing that happens with the with the closing. When we when we sold it, how much we sold it for, and then all those various fees that we had to pay, like the commissions, um, and then all those other transactions that go along with that. Okay. So we did actually send it, and this is what we're sending here, right? This is the purchase, and you'll see in the purchase thing here. Right, we bought it for four hundred thousand essentially, right? And then we had closing costs, so for like that four hundred six number, you'll see that soon, okay? Um, and then the sales, right? We sold the selling statement, right? How much we sold it for? That should tie with there it is, right? From the CP two thousand notice, 
Iris gets everything, right? Um, okay, and then all the different like fees that we're paying here, we also can write those off, okay? Uh, but we sent those along with, what else did we send? So what I did here is I actually prepared this on my tax preparation software as if I were to file this tax return, okay? But I didn't file the return. I just prepared it so I can get these schedules and forms so I can send this along as if we did file it. The reason I'm doing this is because I wanna make the IRS's job as easy as possible when they get our response here. So they know it's clear as day that there's no tax and they know how to proceed once I give this. They don't have to do anything on their end, okay? The, the less you make them work, the more favorable they are to work with you, I believe, okay? So that's why I did this. Um, so if, it, if you're in this type of situation, I would recommend that, you know, if you did this like TurboTax, go into TurboTax and do like the amendment for this and then try and, try and um, generate these schedules and forms uh, by doing that, okay? You don't have to file the amended return again. You just have to produce these forms, print them out, and send it with the response, okay? So this, this is what I did, um, and I kind of did it kind of backwards, but essentially, I'll work the other way around. We'll go from the home sale going up there. All right, so here's the home sale worksheet. Okay, this is an IRS worksheet that comes, again, with a tax preparation software here, um, but when you go ahead and do this, okay? This is purchase or the purchase date and the sales date and then how much we sold it for should look somewhat familiar 15k is essentially like what he paid in commissions and and we got that from <clears throat> the statement here like kind of if we add a lot of these things up here that's what we got okay um and then the so they just subtract <clears throat> those two numbers together and then we got the adjusted um basis here which essentially is Right, this three ninety nine is what we bought the house for, plus the closing costs. Those two together is that adjusted basis there. So the gain on the home is fifty k, but we get the exclusion for the sale of the main home. So we filled this out, said that you know he did live there, and they give us the two fifty is what that is. So then it essentially gets it down to zero. Okay, yeah, and this is all supporting documents here. And this is the basis, right? The 399. Okay. These are all just supporting statements. Okay. So then we take this information up. Where was that? Sorry. Right here. And then we get this on the 8949. Okay. Main home sales. So we see the sales price, right? And then the cost basis. And then here's our exclusion for the sale of the main home. Essentially is what that is. Okay. Then, oh, and then also buried in that is the, that's why the 50. So it's basically that 50 plus the 15 is what that 60 is in there. Okay, so that's the amount of the adjustment there. Okay, so gain is zero. Zero should go on the tax return. And then you'll see that go on the Schedule D right here. There it is. Okay. So there we go. That's all of that here. And then I just say at the end, please adjust the proposed amount of tax to zero as the full gain on the sale qualifies for the exclusion. That's it. And then I signed it. He signed it. We sent it off. Now, timeline of what happened here. Let's see here. We got um, the notice October. I responded end of October. And then let's see here. We got... Voila, look at that, March, the following year. So we're looking like uh, October, November, December, January, February, March, five-ish months uh, for this thing to get responded to, okay? But you'll see that, right? Case closed, 2019. You'll see this all kind of reconciles here. It's 2019, that's what it is. All right, well, I hope the video was helpful for you. If it was, please hit that like button. Um, subscribe if you want to see some more of these, these videos that I will be putting out here shortly uh, within the next week or two. I have a couple more lined up that I've done within the past like year or so. Um, thank you so much.